Good morning, everybody. Happy Saturday morning. It is day five of my Pink Buckaroo 12 Days of Christmas Facebook Lives. Again, why do I come up with these titles that have like 100 words in them? <laughs> I don't know. It's day five. I've got two more Christmas projects for you today. I'm going to give everybody a couple minutes to jump on. Um, if you want a little sneak peek behind the scenes, I'm still in pajamas. Just got out of the shower, enjoying a very lazy Saturday. That's why you're not seeing my face today. <laughs> I hope that you guys are doing the same. Hello, good morning. Hi, Karen, Gina, Joanne. Thank you so much for joining me. Okay, so you guys, have you let your Thanksgiving meal digest or are you still stuffed? I am still stuffed. We went to my mom's for leftovers last night and I cannot stop eating. I hate this time of year because I can't stop. It's awful. Today, I would like to go exercise, but it is pouring down rain. So I guess that's not going to happen. It's dark and cold, which is so unusual for here, you guys. I know some of you, um, that's like gross and you hate it. But down here, oh, it's so nice when that happens. So no exercising today. Maybe I'll get to do some more stamping. Although I, we're going to try to get the kids out of the house. We'll see. All right, so I'm just giving you guys some time to jump on. Hello, good morning, Rhonda, Donda, Stephanie, Kareen. It's good to see you guys this morning. Oh, good, Andrea. I'm glad you like this set. You know, this set has been around for a couple of years. I was going to pull it up in the annual catalog. Um, it is, I think of it as a Christmas stamp set. Let me see what page it's on. On um, page 57. I think of it as a Christmas stamp set. But as I was playing with it last week to get ready for today, I realized it's not really a Christmas stamp set, right? It's on page 57 of the um, annual catalog. Well, it's in the Christmas, well, no, this really isn't the Christmas section. All occasion is what they're calling it. Um, and it has a Christmas wish, but it also has happy birthday. Just some really good sentiments. And it's a million dollar uh, stamp set from Mary Polson. Um, I think this is year two it's been in the catalog. It's a really good one. It's not typically my style of stamp, but I do really like it. So anyhow, we're going to do two, two Christmas projects, but just know that it is not um, specifically only for Christmas. Um, you can use these um, really for any time of the year. Um, we're going to make a crisscross box and a gift card holder that is designed based on a little car, a beautiful card that um, one of my downlines sent me, which I'll show you when we get to it. Um, okay, so let's get started. Let me do um, a couple of, you know, I was also gonna look, were there samples in here? They only have one sample, and that is beautiful, isn't it? Really pretty, I didn't even notice. I always forget to look at the samples. You guys don't forget, there's beautiful samples in the catalog. Okay, so um, today we're doing two more projects and we're off the Facebook Friday schedule for a few weeks because I'm going to do a Facebook Live almost every day. Um, and usually for Facebook Friday, I say you have until Monday to put your order in and I'll send you the three projects that I show you. Well, since I'm doing a live Friday, Saturday, and Monday, what I'm going to do is I'll send you one project from yesterday, which will be this one, one project from today, which will be this one. And, oops, let me grab my schedule, one project from Monday, which is going to be peace and joy. So if you put in an order using this host code by Monday at midnight, that's what you'll receive. These two plus one more, one more from Monday, okay? Um, here's the host code. Here's what my make and takes look like when they come. This was the last one I sent. Um, you will need the stamps and the ink, um, and obviously you'll need the dies for the set. Um, and then the Peace and Joy stamp sets too. Or you can use whatever you have. You can always adapt the projects that I send you. Um, make sure you use the host code because I don't know if you guys want the projects. I know sometimes you don't want the projects and so you don't use the host code. The host code has been really super weird um, lately. Let me show you. We have this new tool um, on our, um, let's see. On for we have this new tool for demonstrators that we can hook up the host code with a link. So if you click the link on the blog, it'll automatically put that host code in your cart, um, which makes it easier. So if you're on today's post, 
and you click um, order right here, it's supposed to already put that host code in your cart. So then when you shop, let's, let's shop. Let's see, let's do, we're gonna add the Rustic Retreat. And you don't have to buy the Rustic Retreat to get the projects. Guys, order whatever you want, as long as it's $35. I will then send you the projects. So look, right here, it did automatically put that host code there. Aha, it works. But you have to double check because there's a lot of, this new website, I guess they're still working out all the kinks. And so there's a lot of like things that aren't, you know, glitches. That's the word glitch. So if you come over to your cart and there's no host code, click this down here. See that it says coupon code. That's not, we don't have any coupons right now, the host code. And so you would click the plus there on the host code and you would type it in. Okay. Um, so that's how it works. I mean, it's pretty simple. You just have to remember to check for that host code. And I have made the mistake of not checking for the host code. So I know it's not easy. And then the other thing down here, um, I will always put the video right here under the last measurements. And then under that right here, see it says click this link. That's the link to the prizes. And you go over and you enter. All you have to do is, I always ask just a random question because the <laughs> survey makes me ask questions. And then your information. Um, and that's how you get in. Did you guys hear the thunder? Oh my gosh, it's thundering. I, oh, I know that that is so silly, but here I'm telling you, I cannot remember the last time I heard thunder. It's awesome. All right, so anyways, that's how you enter for the prizes. Today's prizes, one prize today, Snow Wonder Bundle. I haven't, I haven't used it, but it's on my list. Hopefully before the, I get to Christmas, I will use it. And the dyes are really, really good. So um, one winner from today, go over, enter it, and I will pick a random. I use a random number generator to pick prizes every day. Yesterday's prizes are Linda Brady and Candy McCorkle. And uh, yesterday's question is, what were you thankful for? And Candy said her family and Linda said her health because she's a cancer survivor. I loved seeing your responses of what you were thankful for. And the majority of you put your family. Isn't that funny? I love it. Not funny. It's awesome. All right. So those are the prizes. This is the prize for today. Um, Candy, I have your mailing address. Linda, I don't think I have yours. So if you'll ma email me your, your mailing address. Um, and then remember, order by Monday at midnight. I'll send you three make and takes that look like this. Okay. Okay. Well, let's get started. I think most of us are here. Um, here's the schedule. We'll, we'll look at that at the end again. We'll talk about Monday. Let me move this. The menagerie class you guys, is up in taking registrations. So make sure to email me if you want that link or check your email for the email I sent out on Thursday, my, my, um, you know, my group email. Okay, so rustic retreats, what we're going to do, we're going to make this crisscross box first. Let me get all of my goodies over here and in my giant bag of Christmas candy, I pulled out these. These are the Hershey's milk chocolate. You know, I just love good old Hershey's milk chocolate. You know, it's it's plain, but I love it. I think it's my go-to. If there's a bowl of candy, I always just go for the plain Hershey's. Are you guys like that or do you just not like them? I don't know. I like them. But anyway, these um, Walmart, Target, I think they're pretty much available everywhere. Um, and the box will hold two of them. Um, this box has a little slider, a little belly band that slides off, and then the little door is open, and you, that's where your message is, and you can write your sentiment. And these just slide in and out, okay? This is um, a crisscross box. I've made this box um, numerous different ways in the past. Um, I like making this box. It's pretty easy, but I feel like it's kind of a, a stepped-up fancy version. Okay, let's make the box first. Let me pull over my paper. You're gonna need, and the measurements are over my blog, no PDFs this week for the, for the 12 days. That was just pushing it. That was a little too much what I could handle. So I'm just typing them up on the blog post, okay? Um, let's see, so you're gonna need, I've got my notes. You're gonna need a 10 and 3 fourths by eight and an eighth, okay? And the eighth um, tick mark, that's the one last little tick mark after eight, okay? All right, so we're gonna score the long side at three and a fourth, three and five eighths, which is one tick mark after the um, half. 
So this box is only three eighths of an inch thick. Is that right? Suddenly I'm questioning myself. Yeah, that's right. Okay, so three, three and a fourth, three and five eighths, then seven and an eighth, and seven and a half. And then you're gonna turn it on the short side and you're gonna score it at four and a half and four and seven eighths. So it's a thin box, only three eighths of an inch thick. Okay, now my bone folder. Oh, where did it go? <laughs> it's not here. I need to order several bone folders. For some reason, I just can't keep the darn bone folder in its place. I think I was using it yesterday. Let me grab one over here. Yep, here it is. It's in my other spot. Hello, everybody. So good to see you. Thank you for the shares. I do appreciate that. All right, so take your bone folder. And burnish your lines like this. All right. All right, now we are going to, we're gonna cut off, <laughs> think about it. We are gonna cut off these two segments and these two segments, okay? So with your scissors, just cut those off like that. And over here, whoops getting crooked there we go there we go like that then you're gonna cut these little guys all right just the score lines don't cut them off and then over here like that all right so then in a minute we're gonna take this and we're gonna fold it up like that into those sides okay so we want to Fold those backwards. Now we're gonna cut these at an angle. And so that I don't get confused, I always like to get my pencil and make a mark. I want it to go this way. So I'm gonna put a, a little mark there and a little mark there. And then this one, we want it to go this way from the bottom right to the top left. And I am gonna grab my trimmer, which is hiding down here. Of course. And we're gonna, let's look at the marks so we don't get it wrong. That one to that one. Okay, like that. And then this one to that one. So line them up in that gutter and trim them off. So then you've got that. It looks kind of like a spaceship, doesn't it? All right. So now those will fold over and we're going to get, you know what, I think I'm going to use tear and tape today because those are pretty skinny, pretty skinny little tabs there. And that is exactly the perfect width for our tear and tape. All right. So now take that backing off. like that fold those tabs in and in and press them into those sides and you might need to take like your bone folder press that firmly in there okay like that so then these will fold over like that see how that works let's make sure our candy fits in there really snug. They're not going to come out. They're pretty snug. Okay. Now for the, the designer series paper, you're going to need two pieces of DSP that measure four and fourth by three. And I always have to take a look at it to make sure I'm going to cut it right. And again, I'm going to draw a little, little tick mark there and a little tick mark there because I want it to go that, that way. And then this one, we're going to do the opposite over here and over here. Okay, this time I'm just gonna use my little trimmer. All right, so corner to corner, diagonal, and then diagonal. Now, when you cut two, 
you'll have two pieces left over that will go perfectly on the other, um, another one if you make two. Because see, when you cut one, if you turn it, they're both the same, right? So we need them to go the, you know, we need one to go that way and one to go that way. So when you cut two of them, you'll actually have two sets of them. Does that make sense? Okay, so now let's put these on here. Uh-oh, stick it to the table. Fold that adhesive over, got a little crazy. All right, we'll put that one right there. And this one. Right here. All right, now here is an option that you can do with this box. I've done it both ways. You can adhere these closed so that they don't open and it's just cute. But I kind of like to leave them open because then you can have a little surprise on the inside, which we're gonna put the opposite side of this. This is the Heartwarming Hugs Designer Series paper. You know, the <laughs> my favorite pattern that I can't stop using. I like both sides, which is a problem because then that's I run out quickly. I like the other patterns, but I do like this pattern the best. All right, sending warm hugs on a crumb cake stitched square. And oh, right here. Thanks, Marilyn. Good morning. Hello, everybody. Thanks for joining me. I hope, hopefully you guys are still in your PJs this morning. Now I'm gonna put this square down a little bit low so that I can still see a little bit of green there. Okay, now, I've got a belly band that I'm going to wrap around. Hopefully I cut this belly band long enough. One by eight and a half. Oh yeah, plenty. I just used a strip right off the eight and a half inch side of early espresso. Okay, there we go. Whoops, well, that's okay, it's the back. We could actually flip it over like this because we're gonna attach that um, we're gonna attach the tag to the front and so we can cover over our little boo-boo there. All right, so here's the tag and it's gonna go like this. All right, now let's do the stamping. I am using Stazon. Stazon is our alcohol-based um, ink and you use it when you're gonna watercolor or use any kind of um, liquid within the ink that will spread it. So I'm, if I used my watercolor pencils with, with memento, it would smear the memento. But if I used stays on, it won't smear. Um, if you're now the opposite is true. If you use your stamp and blends, which are alcohol based and you use them with stays on, then it'll get like muddy and smudged. So you have to remember memento with blends stays on with watercolor. Okay, all right, now I have my, um, what am I trying to say, watercolor pencils, and we're gonna color this little house. And I'm gonna go kind of light on it. All right, I'm gonna use Early Espresso for the wood. All right, oh my gosh, it's pouring outside, you guys. I just love it. I love, love, love it. Sometimes you just need a day where you can just do nothing because it's pouring, it's cold, you can't go anywhere, right? Yay, I love it. Especially in a week like this, vacation week. All right, now, um, what color is this? Basic gray on the chimney. We used watercolor pencils the other day, didn't we, on our gnome, one of our gnome projects. Um, and then I think what I did is I took basic black for the roof, very light, just because I wanted it to be different colored than those stones. And so it'll look like a, you know, a different gray. All right, there we go. One bad thing about the rain is that my puppy does not like to go out in the rain. So she had two accidents in the house yesterday, which she hasn't done since I can't even remember. And I just had the carpet cleaned. <laughs> Luckily, it was not on the carpet. She 
She had the decency at least to go on the tile. Ugh. Okay, so now, before I go any further, I'm gonna take my blender pen and I'm gonna blend this all. It's gonna smooth in all of those little, um, you know, little, there might be little streaks or white spaces that we missed. The blender pen will take it all and blend it in. But you need to come over here and run it clean before you move on to the next color because it does pick up the color. Ooh, that black is dark. We may have gone a little too dark with that. This house reminds me of the houses I saw up in Utah on the way to Bryce Canyon. We drove the beautiful drive from um, Lake Powell, I forgot the town, and uh, Page. We drove from Page up to up to Bryce Canyon. It's a beautiful drive. All right, so now let's blend in our little chimney. Okay. And I do need to go around the window here with my brown. And our trees will be old olive. Um, Beth, yes, this is the, the wood mount stamp cases um, that I keep it in. Unfortunately, they are discontinued. Um, but I bet you could probably find them on eBay. Um, it, it depends on how many you have. I think I have both sets in here plus maybe extras. I may have more than, than um, one set of the, the smaller set, if I remember correctly. But yeah, they fit nicely in there. Okay, there we go. Now I've saved my favorite color for last, <laughs> white. I love the white pencil because we, you know, it's hard to get white ink on anything and uh, a white pencil does a great job. And I'm gonna add just some snow down here too. All right, and then how about a little bit of snow on the roof? Just in those cracks where it would linger there on the roof, like that. Oh, so fun and pretty. Okay, one more time with the blender. And I think that is it. That will do, very pretty. Okay, I decided to kind of thread this um, twine through, or the braided linen trim, through the end of it, like this. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this braided linen trim and go around like this, stick it in the back of this, And before I tie it, I need to make sure it's in the right place. So get your dimensionals and we'll put one on either side of that braided linen trim on the belly band like that. And then I can bring this over and tie the bow kind of onto the tag. See how I looped that in there like that. Okay, and then last but not least, we need a few of our snowflakes, adhesive backed snowflakes. I've been using the heck out of these. And those of you who ordered with me during the one day sale that turned into a two day sale, I have ordered all your goodies and I will get them out as soon as I get them. Um, this was part of the deal, the adhesive-backed snowflakes, because they are fantastic. All right, so let's move that down just a little bit. And there you have it. How cute, right? Really, really cute. You know, I found another Hershey's thing. Let's see if it will fit. I don't know if it will. No, it looks a little bit too big. Look how cute this is. I found this at Target, it's big. I don't think it would fit. Well, it might. It just is gonna be taller. Oh yeah, look, it's just too tall. <laughs> you need to make your piece bigger. So you'd have to have a 12 by 12 piece of cardstock. I have plans for that. Isn't that cute? And there's a snowman one too. So hopefully I'll get us a project made for those because 
I think my kids would go crazy for that. Very cute. Okay. All right, moving on. Let's see, I'm gonna pull my hair out just a sec. Okay, sorry, gotta pull my hair back because it was driving me crazy. All right, so project number one is done. That will be one of your projects that you get if you put your order in by Monday at midnight. I love this project. I love the crisscross box. I do it a lot. All right, now let me move all of this so that I can show you the next project. The next project is a, I think the, the official name for this would be a Z Fold. Um, it, it is a little bit different than the Z Folds I've seen. This came from my downline, Mary Ann Curtis. She sent this to me. Um, oh no, not Marianne. It was Christy who sent it to me. I was thinking it was Marianne. Christy sent this to me. I'm sorry, Christy. Um, for some reason I had in my mind, it was Marianne. Christy sent it to me for my birthday and it was so gorgeous. It has been sitting on my desk like this since I got it. And, uh, I wanted to recreate it. So she did it for my birthday back in September and we're going to do it for Christmas. Isn't that pretty? Okay. So to, and to be, <laughs> to be honest, I took it all apart so I could see exactly how she made it. And look, I was able to put it back together so you can't tell that I tore it apart. It was so beautiful. I hated doing it. Oh, Christy lives in Utah. She lives up in my favorite state. I love Utah. Okay, now let me get all of this. Of course, I have the things I need first on the bottom. Why do I always do that? Let me get it all up here. This one we're going to use Memento because we are going to use our stamp and blend with that beautiful deer. I do, I have used this deer before for a masculine project. Um, you can see that project. If you go back and, and type in the, the name Rustic Retreat in my blog search, you'll find it. Okay, all of that there. So this is a piece of, um, hello, what's it called? Trimming the Town, Trimming the Town Designer Series paper. Suddenly I drew a blank. Uh, it's five and a half by 12. And we're gonna be able to see both sides. This is great for that paper that you like both sides. And I'm gonna score it just at four and eight. Now I'm gonna cut it at a diagonal and I, I have to think about how I wanna do this. From one side down to the other, okay? And you can go, the first time I did an inch and a half, but I think this time we'll do two inches. So I'm gonna make a little mark here at two inches. That way we can see more of the paper. Because the first time I felt like I didn't go far enough. So I'm gonna take that little tick mark. Now I can't see it. Okay, well, we'll just mark it again. Why can't I see it? Should be right there, I guess, because it's on the tree. Okay. So we're gonna take that tick mark right there and go up to the top corner, okay? Now, this doesn't have to be exact. You can, you know, you can do it however you want. But look, see how we made that slant? There we go. Now, the hard part is to decide which way you want it to go. Do you wanna see more of the tree paper or do you want to see more of the polka dot paper? This one I did the trees because it's, you know, we're going with the theme of the rustic retreat. So I think I'm going to stick with that, even though that polka dot is one of my favorites. All right, so I'm going to get my liquid glue. Um, Rhonda, this is your favorite paper from that pack. I love it. That whole pack of paper, the um, Trimming the Town Designer Series paper is really, really good. I have been using it a bunch and I actually over ordered it for um, Stan, uh, Club Create. So I have a lot of it, so we need to use it up. Okay, now, so I put glue here and here so that these are pockets. And then I have a piece of real red that is a size of a card, um, five and a half by four and a fourth. And we're gonna adhere this, and you could even make this backside a pocket as well put your adhesive on the sides, but I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna leave it. Okay, so there we go. So we've got a pocket here 
in here. And you know, Kylie Bertucci had a great card yesterday that was a Z Fold card. She took another piece of designer series paper and went across the front like that, which I really like that. Hmm. Maybe I should add that. What do you think? Should I add it? Will it be too much? Okay, I'll leave it off because we're going to use this on one of the tags. Okay, let's go ahead and make our tag. I'm going to stamp our our rain or not our reindeer, our deer in memento. Okay. And I am going to color him with Stampin' Blends. Um, Laura, how do I decide which adhesive to use? You know, it's really a matter of preference. I don't like liquid glue because right now I have it all over my fingers. The reason I used liquid glue on here is because I wanted it to be really thin. I was worried that if I used my thick, then it would make that middle space too skinny for my tags to fit in. So I used just a real thin bead of glue in there so that I would have enough room in the pockets. Um, I prefer a tape runner and I prefer Stamp and Seal Plus. And that is just a matter of preference. Um, it is very, very strong. The Stamp and Seal is great too, um, but it, I find that I, it, it doesn't run as well, I think, as a Stamp and Seal Plus. The downside of that is the Stamp and Seal Plus is a lot more expensive than the Stamp and Seal. So I try to use a Stamp and Seal on my cards. But a lot of people use Tombow Liquid on everything. Um, and it's a really affordable adhesive. So <laughs> that's a long answer for, it's a matter of preference. I used the tear and tape earlier because I needed a strong, quick adhesive. I didn't want to wait for it to dry, but it needed to be thin on that tab because the tab was very skinny. Um, so I just keep them all here and just kind of whatever's, you know, if it's a 3D, I definitely am going to use Stamp and Seal Plus, Tombow, or Tear and Tape. And I don't use Tear and Tape very much anymore because now we have Stamp and Seal Plus, and I just like the fact that it's a runner and it just, you know, a quick snap off. Um, what do you think I should do with antlers? I did it in Petal Pink. I think I'm just going to do Crumb Cake Light because I don't really like the way Petal Pink looks on it. All right, so we'll do that. Do, do, do. I just did... Um, I did dark and light crumb cake. I'm gonna take my light old olive and just kind of color in those, the grassy area. It's so, so skinny and little that you can't really color it in. So I'm just gonna color around it. All right, and then I like to take my pool party and go all the way around this guy. This is something that you could leave off if you wanted, but I kind of like to do this. It takes a little bit longer to fill it all in, but it's so pretty. So I'm gonna go all the way around with my bullet tip and around my beer. And you know, some people leave it just like this, and maybe we should just leave it like that today. Ooh, I think maybe we will. See over here on the original, I colored the whole tag with pool party. But I think today we'll just leave it like that for time's sake. See how I did? I just put one around it a little bit. Hmm, I think we'll leave it like that today. Okay, all right, so then we've got the tag, the simplified tag with less coloring. We're gonna put that here on the front. And I have cut out two trees from the, um, in the pines dies. Now, Laura, I'm gonna use liquid glue here because it's so skinny. It'll be hard to get adhesive on the back of that one um, without, without it showing through. I'm gonna cut off the trunk there, a little bit of adhesive. The, the, another, the other thing I don't like about liquid glue is it takes a while to dry and I'm totally impatient. All right, so let's move that here's another good reason you can use this because you can then move it around easily without tearing your paper. You know, they all just have different pros and cons. It's a matter of preference and price and, you know, 
need for whatever you're doing. All right, so I stamped the sentiment. The sentiment is from Itty Bitty Christmas in that memento black on Whisper White. I'm gonna punch it with a classic label punch. I'm gonna get some mini dimensionals somewhere in here. Ah, <laughs> Terry, see you teammates. We've got lots of sweet Sam Peters on here this morning. I don't think I've ever gone live on a Saturday before. And as I was laying in bed this morning, I was thinking, why did I do this? Why did I schedule Saturday? <laughs> but now I'm awake and I'm here and I'm glad we're doing it. All right, so I've got that there. I'm gonna use the Cinnamon Cider ribbon. Make a bow and a glue dot right there. Okay, now for the tags. I designed this so that you could put a gift card holder on one of them. See how I did that? So that scrap piece of paper left, we're gonna use that for kind of a little pocket. I'm gonna use my, why can't I remember the name of this? Even last night I was typing it up and I was like, what's the name, what's the name, what's the name? The, the I wanna call it the triple corner punch, but that's not it, somebody tell me. I typed it in the supply list. It, it, I need to write the name on it. I'm gonna do that. <laughs> I'm gonna write the name on it because I can't ever remember. All right, so we have a larger piece here, the larger tag. And again, I'm gonna use my Tombow just around the edge so that I create that pocket for the gift card. Oops, I went too far out with my adhesive. So we're gonna have to adjust that. now that I've laid it down. That's all right. All right, we'll put that right there like that. So then you can stick your gift card in there. Triple trio punch? No, Chris, I don't think that's it. Detailed trio, that's it. Trish, Trish says it, detailed trio. Detailed trio. I knew, I always know it has trio in the name, but I always think it starts with trio. All right, where's my ribbon? Here it is. We're going to cut two little pieces, whoa, see, glue everywhere. At least I don't have ink all over my hands today like I did yesterday. All right, do I have staples? I do, I have staples. I'm just gonna fold it and staple it like that. And that one goes there. And then this one, we're gonna stamp that Merry Christmas. Uh, da, da, where did it go? over here. This is the one that we used earlier today. Sending warm Christmas wishes. And this is where you can write your little, your salutation, <laughs> your Merry Christmas, love, and then your name. Okay. All right. Staple. And that one goes in the front. You could put a gift card here too, if you wanted to do two gift cards. And there it is. And I kind of like to make them go like that. To, and they look a little long, don't you think? Let me use my other scissors. Let's trim them down a little bit. And there we have it. So cute. So Christy, thank you for the inspiration. I love it. Z Fold pocket card. I, I don't know, that's what I'm calling it. The Z Fold pocket card. Okay, so today we made that and we made this. Um, Remember, if you would like this make and take and one of yesterday's make and takes and one of Monday's make and takes, would you like a sneak peek for Monday? Let me grab it. Mm, let's see, which one do I wanna show you? How about this one? Here's a sneak peek from Monday. Look, I used that paper again. Okay, <laughs> I've got to branch out. If you would like three of the make and takes for free, make sure your order is in Monday by midnight using the host code and make sure your order is over 35. If your order is over 150, don't use the host code because you'll get free stamp and rewards, but I'll still send you the projects, okay? And Monday, we're, we are changing times for Facebook Live. I'll be live Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday next week at two o'clock. And then Friday, I'll be out of town. So I will see you Monday at two 
Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday at 2 o'clock Central, okay? Um, Amy, the measurements are on my blog, pinkbuckaroo.com. They are over there under that um, project. Yes, the tags are there. All right, you guys, thank you. I will see you on Monday. Have a great, relaxing weekend. Bye, everybody.